is. So what are you doing, Kevin? What are you explaining? Okay, here's a, here's a common scenario that we see happening in the market all the time, especially in low inventory markets all over North America. And that is that you've got to sell a, a homeowner that wants to sell their home, but they're afraid of being homeless. <laughs> they don't want to not be able to find another home to buy. And so they're like, well, let's find another home to buy first, and then we'll sell our home. Or they'll say, can you, you know, how are we going to do that? What if I sell my home and they can't find another home? Can you help me with that? And the, and the answer is absolutely. We do this all the time. So why don't we go ahead and set up a time to get together and just take a look at the best way to make all that happen for you. Fair enough? And then you set the appointment. You never do this. Um, you never do this on the phone or at the door. This is a listing appointment. Now you're going to set the appointment. Then you're going to pre-qualify the appointment and make sure there's enough motivation there that this is worth having a conversation with them. But when you're in the listing presentation now, and this is their concern, so I'm pre-qualifying. So if we can, if you feel confident that we can absolutely find you another home, we can make all this happen. Are you definitely ready to make this move? Yes, we're ready to make the move. Great. Okay, now we're we're in a listing presentation. So there's really four ways you can do this. I've not rehearsed this for anything, so but I just had we're in role play this morning and some guys were asking about it. So here's basically the way this, this works out. The first thing that they can do is you go ahead and sell first, and we got that's not gonna work. You sell first, and then you buy contingent. Hmm. Okay, let's just kind of, let me just, let's it. so the next one is we're going to try to buy contingent, and this is what a lot of you want to do, and then sell. The reverse. The reverse. Okay. Next option is you sell contingent and then buy. And that means we're going to put our house on the market, get it sold, but it's going to be contingent upon the purchase of an upleg home, of the next home we're buying. Okay. Another one is you can sell first, rent, and then buy. Mm. Okay? Now this one here is sell first and buy and is actually buy contingent. The fifth way you can do this is sell is buy with no contingencies, which means you're actually gonna you're actually going to go ahead and close on the home and then sell. Okay? Now, here's what's going to happen. You're not going to need to go through all five of these scenarios with anybody. And the reason is, is because most of them won't qualify for all five. Or if they will qualify for one of them, then they aren't. the other one uh, doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense? So, for example, sell first can buy contingent. Who could do this? Uh, I mean, anybody that can anybody. sell and buy can do this. In other words, they can qualify to do it. If they can qualify to buy, contingent upon selling their, their home, and so forth. What is the drawback of this one? What in happens, a low inventory market. What happens if you're not going to be able to find something? It's, you're, you're going to be able to find something. There are houses for sale. The problem is when you're competing against 16 other offers, and you're trying to put in a contingency offer, oh. who, what seller is going to accept your offer? Got got it. Got it. They're not. So in a low inventory market, this one is not gonna is not gonna work. This one is not gonna work at all. Okay? Now you buy contingent and then put your house on the market. What's the problem? Same problem as this one. I want to buy a contingent and I haven't even put my house on the market. Well there's even a lower chance that anybody's gonna take a look at that one. So in a low inventory market, not gonna happen. Okay? Sell contingent and then buy. That means we're gonna go ahead and put our house on the market. Okay, and we're going to get it under contract contingent upon me finding my upleg home. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I go buy a home. That's how everybody does. This is the better scenario because now I can go and when I do put an offer, I've got, if assuming you're buyer, and you're still going to have your, your qualifications as a buyer. If you're selling contingent and buying contingent, it still weakens you a little bit, but at least you've got solid backup and then you've got a better chance. So this is a better option than these and probably right here is your best option for most people. Your better option is this one and this one in terms of being able to get the best deal both ways. And this is where you just ask them, so what's important to you? Is getting the best deal most important or least hassle? Because the least hassle may end up taking you two years. <laughs> this The least hassle is I don't want to have to put anything at risk. See, they don't want risk. Okay, If you go low risk, it's going to take you forever because you've got to find somebody that's willing to do that. High risk is I got to sell my house and then bet that I can buy it. 
So there's two ways you can do it. Sell your house first, and we're going to work like crazy to find you a home to buy. And if we can't, you're going to go into a temporary rental, put your property in storage, and so forth. But now you got your cash, you're closed, there's no contingency. When we find the right house, you're able to jump on it. But you may be through three to six months of inconvenience. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And there's what makes that more inconvenient if they have pets, if they have, I mean, there's just a million things that can make it more or less inconvenient. Finding a short term rental and so forth is going to be expensive. Yes. So when you're trying to sell where there's less inconvenience and less uncertainty, it's going to cost you more money, mm -hmm. bottom line. Okay? The, the, and then the last one is to buy with no contingency and then sell. That's what's the what's the issue there? Well, you got to have money. Cash. You got to have money. You got to be able to own two homes at one time. Okay, one way or another. But this one right here actually gives them the most security. You just have to be able to afford to have, make it happen. So when you're sitting down with the sellers then, what you do is you find out, in the pre-qualifying, you can find out that one ain't gonna work, okay? You, before you even meet, you can find out what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. And then what you just show them is, is that this scenario and this scenario, you're not gonna get a house, okay? I mean, literally, Julie's been working, we've been working with a client for over a year, they wanna sell so bad, they wanna move so bad, but they're wanting to find the perfect house for the perfect price, and put an offer on it and get it under contract and then put their house in the market. And we just, you know, you know what? It won't work. Not gonna work. You can go to broke, we'll, we'll, when the open houses are there, we'll send you a house to look at. But when you fall in love with it, why are you even doing it? We're not writing offers. All we're trying to do is get them to the point where they're ready to actually do it. We're, we're not spending, you don't spend time with them except reassure them, hey, whenever you're ready, we can make this happen for you. Here's another house just came with the market. Go take a look at it. Go to the open house, check it out. Okay? Well, we All think right. we're gonna look at it. Go. <laughs> All right. They want to buy it. So that's how it works out. But those strategies will make that happen for you. All right. That's. Great.